You're watching News Channel 12 at 10 with Kathy Tons, meteorologist Ken South with your Storm Team 12 forecast, and Greg Flynn Sports. News Channel 12 is coverage you can count on. Thank you for joining us. I'm Kathy Times. The Jackson Police Department begins its second round of changes recommended by the Linder Maple Police Study. These modifications include a change of scenery for JPD detectives. News Channel 12 Cindy Carter explains in tonight's big story. Some new faces will soon report to work at JPD's Precinct 3. This week, 10 police detectives will move from the downtown headquarters to this new location. It's one of the many recommendations made by the Linder Maple Police Study. The detectives will be out with the units out there in the field, in the area for which they serve, not downtown at headquarters, uh, where it's sometimes very difficult for them to get out and uh, talk with the officers. Recently, 16 detectives moved into Precinct 2. They handle cases in both Precincts 1 and 2. This batch of detectives will work with officers to solve cases in precincts 3 and 4. About the detective being downtown and the officer being out in the field, they never got together. This way they're back to back, side by side. Officer Graham says detectives also must respond to crimes within 10 days. That should be easier now that they are closer to the people they serve. They will be more closer to the central area, so that will be a plus also as far as responding to uh, whatever call need to be responded to. This relocation of JPD detectives is one of several changes the city is making as it moves toward a more efficient government. Cindy Carter, News Channel 12. Other JPD changes include a warrant unit dedicated to finding and arresting felons with outstanding warrants and there will be a special unit established to investigate unsolved crimes. We'll have more news for you in a moment, but first let's check in with Tony Mastro for our first look at the forecast. And after a lot of rain today, it seems to be finally letting up outside. Well, we're done here at the Metro. That is the good news and a good shellacking of rain. Uh, Kathy, anywhere from half an inch to an inch of rain, exactly what the doctor ordered. Very little in terms of severe weather, just a couple of stray severe thunderstorms and most importantly, again, done for the night. Take a look at the next red super tracker. Summary over the past three hours done in the metro. The rains continue east of I-55, and within the next uh, two, three hours, they will be done across the state. In its wake, it will be cloudy. It will be cool. 50s all throughout the day tomorrow. A chance for a spot shower, especially in the morning. But I think cool is the operative word. We'll see how long that word is in the forecast coming up in about eight minutes. All right. Thank you, Tony. You bet. Well, all of the rain today made for some dangerous driving conditions. The Jackson Police Department and the Mississippi Highway Patrol have been working dozens of accidents all day. This one happened just before 8 o'clock tonight. A witness says the SUV was traveling on Interstate 20 in Ellis when it spun out of control and went off the road. Authorities are investigating the shooting death of a 12-year-old Mississippi boy. It happened yesterday in Yazoo County. Authorities say Ricky Bradshaw Jr. was shot in the leg with a 20-gauge shotgun. Yazoo County's coroner adds Bradshaw was walking home with three other teenagers when the shooting occurred. Investigators say one of the teens may have been trying to unload the gun when it accidentally went off. Bradshaw died at the hospital. The cause of death was shock. The Harley-Davidson Organization of Central Mississippi honored a Jackson police officer while bringing joy to some local children. The group held the John Sandifer Memorial Toy Run this afternoon. John Differ was a police officer killed while directing traffic at Memorial Stadium. The bikers and children met at the Baptist Children's Village and rode to the Harley shop. A cookout was waiting for them as well as Christmas presents. The sounds of Christmas are breaking the silence that takes over downtown Jackson on weekends. Crossgates United Methodist Church Youth Choir performed this afternoon on the Rotunda Balcony. It's just part of the many activities going on all month long at the Old Capitol. Historical holiday exhibits will be on display through the 23rd, and the Sunday afternoon concert series returns next week with St. Andrew's Cathedral Choir. There's good news for holiday travelers headed south. A three-year construction project is finally over, covering the south tonight. The construction wrapped up ahead of schedule. Instead of three years, the widening project for I-10 only took two and a half years to complete. That's 400 days earlier. The Michigan Construction Company is thankful for a lot of dry weather. They were rewarded with a bonus of $6 million for finishing early. The two teens who went on a shooting rampage at Columbine High School reportedly hoped to kill 250 students and be remembered for the massacre. 
covering America tonight. Time Magazine reports Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold talked of their planned attack in home videotapes. Time reporters were given access to these tapes. They were made weeks before the April 20th shootings at Columbine. A Time reporter says the videos reveal the pair's intense rage. They hate blacks, they hate Jews, they hate Asians. And then they say, and you white people don't think we don't hate you too. You're no better than anyone else. So the rage that they have um, goes beyond social cruelty or jock culture. Um, it's directed at, at a lot of the world. Time says Klebold and Harris even discussed movie directors who would make their story, naming Steven Spielberg and Quentin Tarantino. A small plane crash killed three people in northeastern Pennsylvania. The FAA says the aircraft was a twin-engine turbojet. It crashed shortly before 4 o'clock in a wooded area. The plane left Seattle and was en route to an airport in northern New Jersey. The FAA says there was no indication of problems before the plane dropped off the radar. Witnesses say the plane came down nose first and was spinning. The Massachusetts warehouse where six firefighters were killed is coming down. Workers began knocking down the walls after the last of the six victims was recovered last night. A homeless couple is believed to have started the fire when they knocked over a candle during an argument. The building will be demolished once the fire investigation is over. There's a warning to all Americans planning to travel abroad this New Year's. Secretary of State Madeleine Albright says there's evidence terrorists could strike at large holiday gatherings, but that evidence is not pointing to attacks planned against Americans here in the States. Basically, we believe we have a, an obligation to let the American people know when there are potential terrorist threats, and we are concerned about Americans traveling abroad and being in large groups and we are suggesting that if they do travel abroad um, that they be in touch with the American Embassy and the consulate and take care. Albright was also asked if Osama bin Laden is at the heart of the warnings. She says bin Laden continues to be a concern but that other groups are under watch as well. Well by day he lives the life of a Cuban boy involved in an international custody battle but tonight He's living the life of any six-year-old dreams about. Ilian Gonzalez got a VIP tour of Disney World. The biggest thrill of his day was a meeting with Mickey Mouse. Ilian and his family were offered the trip as a relief from the controversy. Fire officials are urging people to take extra care this holiday season, and the best place to start is with your tree. Tim Williams has useful tips on keeping your decorations from becoming hazards. Do you know how to keep your tree safe for the holiday season? Mm, not really. <laughs> I don't. Well, the main thing is to keep it watered. If it dries out, then the heat from the lights is all to set it on fire. Bob and Melissa Hodges represent what most people know about pine preparedness. But firefighters say there is much more to know to keep these flickering lights from becoming these. Anne Arundel County Battalion Chief John Scholl says added electrical lights and extension cords get tricky this time of year and easily become hazards. The first tip, make sure electrical items are approved. Second, check hidden fuses inside plugs if lights don't work. And most people have a few of these. What we suggest is that you use a thicker cord. This is people's choice and this is what people are going to use and we realize that and we know that. So the way to keep track of it is don't cover them, leave them where you can check them from time to time and if they're hot discontinue their use. Now the problem comes in is as you set a tree, trees aren't normally designed to be cut and then kept inside a home that's 70 degrees with very low humidity. So every day it gets a little drier. Watch in this demonstration how quickly this tree burns. The firefighter suggests several things. Checking water several times a day, keeping trees away from doorways in case there is an emergency, and keep them at least three feet away from any heat source, especially fireplaces. The children are more excited. There are things that are, that are going on that aren't normal and typical. So you have to be a little bit more aware and you have to be a little bit more cautious. In Millersville, Tim Williams, WJZ, Eyewitness News. The fire marshal also says do not overload extension cords, do not cover wires with tree skirts or rugs, and make sure smoke detectors are working. Do you have a newborn at home? There are new baby monitors that may help you sleep easier. That story after Tony's complete Storm Team 12 forecast.
Channel 12's chief meteorologist, Tony Mastro, recognized for excellence with the AMS television seal of approval. Storm Team 12 is weather coverage you can count on. Welcome back, everyone. A rainy night to be sure, but also to be sure it is done, at least for a few hours. Uh, and that, of course, includes all the heavy, steady rain we've had. In fact, uh, pinpoint forecast tomorrow still is a threat for a few couple of isolated showers and much lighter rain. That's all we're talking about. The big story is going to be the cool air and the cloudy skies, temperatures in the 50s all day long. Well, tonight, boy, was it a washout. 58 degrees, uh, the current temperature out at the airport, Thompson Field, about an inch and a third, dew point at 58, and the wind is variable at 5, pressure 29.75. It's low, but it's holding steady. We have the storm system basically right overhead. In fact, uh, let's take a look at the uh, next five super tracker. Summary of the past three hours, rain again, scooting on by to the east, heavy a thunderstorm activity from Hattiesburg back, back down to Poplarville. All done in places like Rolling Fork, Vicksburg, Port Gibson, Natchez, and Butte. No more rain for the rest of this evening. But look at these uh, dark areas of blue. Anywhere from half an inch to as much as an inch and a half of rain. Macomb, you folks picked up a little bit more than an inch. Tupelo, close to two inches. And here in the capital city, again, about an inch of and a third. So uh, definitely some rainfall out there. 60 is where we made it up to today. Look at Hattiesburg topping out at 79 degrees. Here's the current temperatures. And uh, we're still noticing a lot of 50s. So temperatures. There we go. Sometimes you get to give the computer a little kick. 58 is the current temperature here. 52 in Greenville. Now look at Hattiesburg. 8 degrees warmer at 66. And it's 4 degrees warmer than that in Biloxi. Topsy-turvy temperatures across the state. There's got to be something going on. Well, the storm system is coming on through. And on the warm side of the storms, we're seeing the bulk of the rain. Fronts already through Natchez, but not past Macomb. It'll slide on through in the next couple of hours, and Macomb, temperatures are going to drop about a good 8, 9 degrees in probably about an hour. There go the clouds, and the rain fall off to the east. You think, okay, that's done, we're done, but there's a little twist to the clouds. Back over here, over east Texas, that is the upper-level storm system that is yet to swing on through, and that's why there's still the threat for a few showers, but much lighter than what we've been through this evening. We've been through the worst of it all. In fact, the storm system again, about midway through the state, rain on the east side of the storm system, and again, it'll continue to lift northeastward. Maybe actually a couple opportunities for a few breaks of sun down to the south, but I'm really gonna hold the clouds here in central and northern areas of the state. And that's why I don't think temperatures are gonna get out of the 50s. Sunshine does return on Tuesday, but it's cool sunshine. Another front coming through on Wednesday just to reinforce the cool air. But it'll come through dry. Low temperatures this evening, uh, dropping down into the lower 50s, but with the dense cloud cover, not warming at all during the day. Take a look at the forecast now for tonight. We'll get down to a low of 52. The rain will come to an end east of I-55. And for tomorrow, a cloudy and cool one. Again, a shower or a sprinkle is possible, especially through the first half of the day up until about the noon hour. 56 is the best we're going to do. In the next seven days, shape up this way. And the sun does pop out on Tuesday. Another, uh, another cold front rather coming through on Wednesday is going to drop the temperature back down into the 50s and then a slow recovery into the weekend. No, not until next Sunday until we reach the mid-60s. And that'll be our next chance for some showers as well. Still, I like those two words. Cool sunshine. <laughs> cool sunshine, yeah. A little bit more Christmassy weather. I'll say. Thank you, Tony. Okay. Many women who face hysterectomies look for an alternative, but the procedure may actually help your sex life. Details next in tonight's Medical Watch. Watching News Channel 12 at 10 with Kathy Times, meteorologist Ken Sub with your Storm Team 12 forecast, and Greg Flynn Sports. News Channel 12 is coverage you can count on. A new device helps parents monitor their newborns. Women's sex lives may actually improve after a hysterectomy, and our two nostrils might help us smell better than one. News Channel 12's Melanie Christopher has the details in tonight's Medical Watch. 
I'm going to go check on him. He's fine. Just relax. New advances in baby monitoring may help parents rest a little easier. Older devices only picked up sound. The new Safety First Angel Care Sound Monitor and Movement Reassurance System is designed to monitor both sound and movement. The motion sensor pad is placed under the crib mattress and can detect the slightest breathing and twitching movements. If movement stops for more than 20 seconds, the system alerts parents of a potential problem. If you're worried a hysterectomy might cause your sex life to suffer, take note. Contrary to popular belief, women who undergo the operation may experience a dramatic improvement in their sex lives. A new study from researchers at the University of Maryland School of Medicine finds post-hysterectomy women have stronger sexual desires, more frequent orgasms, and less pain during intercourse. Two reasons cited, hysterectomies help reduce pain and discomfort and eliminate the risk of pregnancy, making sex all the more desirable and enjoyable. They look the same and they feel the same, but do they smell the same? According to Stanford University researchers, the answer is no. Studies find that each nostril smells different odors better than the other. It seems when we inhale, air is pulled into our nostrils at different speeds. The nostril receiving a faster airflow is more sensitive to smells known as high sorption odorants, while the other nostril can better detect low sorption odorants. This process may give us more smells per breath. Melanie Christopher, News Channel 12. The Jackson Bandits take another shot at going over the 500 mark. And the Saints try to pull off an upset of the Rams. Steve Nissim is up next with sports. Now, News Channel 12 Steve Nissim with tonight's scores and action. News Channel 12 is coverage you can count on. Good evening, everybody. Santa going for teal this winter. North Carolina hosting Tennessee Tech. Tar Heels on the fast break. Ed Coda fooled you. Coda's extra special pass leads to a layup. The UNC point guard fakes around one way, then wraps it around the other. It's very pretty and earns play of the day. The Jackson Bandits are trying to work their way up the ECHL, st ECHL standings. There are, and so are the New Orleans Brass. Both teams hoping to nudge above the 500 mark as they hooked up at the Coliseum. I'll get it straight. The Banditos came in having lost just twice in their last 12. Second period, one zip Brass. Sammy Jarvinpa gets it past David Brumby just like that. It was two zip New Orleans. Later on, the Brass looking for more. Darren Sinclair skating in on Brumby, but denied. The Bandits going with a nice save, but the Brass goes on to win it, 4-2, to two, that final. For the Saints, even good news is bad news. New Orleans has the second worst record in the league, which should assure them one of the top picks in next year's draft. Unfortunately, it's the Rams who will be making that pick, thanks to the Ricky Williams trade. Poor Dick and the gang hosting those 10-2 and two Rams. First quarter, Kurt Warner to Robert Holcomb. And that made it 7-3 St. Louis. Second quarter, now 7-6. Billy Joe Tolliver to tight end Cam Cleland for the touchdown. The Saints on top, 14-6. Later on, St. Louis facing third down. Warner eludes the rush and says, uh, excuse me, uh, pardon me, I'm throwing it this way. Great play to Ricky Prohl for the first down. That led to a touchdown. It was 17-14 Rams. Still in the second quarter, Warner to Marshall Falk, and he's got the moves. The Rams beat the Saints. Big shocker, 30-14, to that final. In Green Bay, the Packers hosting the Panthers. First quarter, Steve Berline has got problems. He's hit the ball in the air. Keith McKenzie's got it for the touchdown. 7-3 pack, and he's going to take the leap. All right. To the third quarter, 17-14 Panthers, former Southern Miss star Brett Favre, the former all-corn star Donald Driver, his first touchdown in the NFL, and yeah, they taught him how to dance on the reservation. Yeah, five seconds left, 31-27, Pack, last play of the game, Burline finds some room, and he's in there. The Panthers upset the Pack, 33-31. Elsewhere in week 14 of the NFL, former Saints coach Jim Moore was trying to keep the Colts train on the fast track. And in New York, they threw Keyshawn Johnson the darn ball. It's all part of the two-minute drill. The missile blew up in Pittsburgh today. Quadri Ishmael caught not one, not two, but three touchdown passes in the third quarter alone as the Ravens rolled on the Steelers 31-24.
Bengals punt returner Craig Yeast rose to the occasion today against the Browns. He's going the distance. 81 yards for the touchdown as Cincy wins it 44 to 28. At Indy, Edrin James ties a rookie record with his ninth 100-yard rushing game. Nine wins in a row for Jim Moore and the Colts as they beat New England 20 to 15. In Washington, Mr. Ref trying to do his Edwin Moses imitation, but that can't be what he wanted to do. Stephen Davis had no such problems. 189 yards on the ground as the Redskins dumped the cards 28 to 3. It was not a pretty day for Bills fans. Leading the Giants by one in the final minutes, but Kerry Collins engineers a drive and Kerry Blanchard from 48 yards out for the win. It's true. Giants win 19 to 17. In Big D, the Cowboys put a hurting on the Eagles. Chris Warren finds the end zone as the Cowboys cruise 20 to 10. The Niners defense has been porous this season, but they got the job done today. San Fran dances on Dan Reeves and the Falcons, 26-7. Miami was at the Meadowlands to take on the Jets. Keyshawn Johnson, two fourth-quarter touchdown receptions as the Jets fry the fish, 28-20. In Tampa, the Buccaneers were down seven to the Lions in the fourth quarter. Mike Allstott ties them with that touchdown run. A few minutes later, Sean King hits them, and Allstott's headed to the zone. The Bucs win 23-16 and take over first in the NFC Central. Seahawks down three to the Chargers in the final seconds. Todd Peterson for the tie. Nope. His third missed field goal in the fourth quarter. The Chargers get by 19-16. All right, in the late game, the Chiefs leading the Vikings 28-21 in the fourth. And Monday night, the Jaguars will be hosting the Broncos. It may serve as little consolation, but Jackson State did have an impressive showing of support yesterday in Birmingham. Tiger fans made up an estimated 20,000 of the 47,000 that showed up for the inaugural SWAC championship game. Of course, the game did not turn out the way Robert Hughes and the JSU faithful hoped. The Tigers did make an impressive comeback after falling behind by 14 in the third quarter. JSU rolled up 20 consecutive points in the fourth to take a 30 to 24 lead. In the end, though, Southern would come back to claim a thrilling 31-30 win and earn a trip to the Heritage Bowl. Despite coming up short, though, the Tigers were proud of the effort. I mean, it happens like this, big games like this, this is what it's all about. We have no reason to hold our head that we're still true champions in a Southern good ball club. We just had to go out and give all we got. We, we tried our best. We did all we could. It wasn't enough. It was a wonderful effort by us, and uh, it would have been better and sweeter if we'd have won it, but we didn't, and uh, right now we're just going through the process. Tough loss for those guys. I was out there in Birmingham. A great atmosphere for this first uh, SWAT championship game and a great effort by Jackson State. Just a little bit short. All right. Thank you very much, Tony. Mm -hmm. We will be right back, Steve, with a final look at the <laughs> forecast. Stay with us. Thank you, everyone. The rain is done in the west as we put the tracker into motion. It's done in the metro, and in the next three hours, it'll be done off to the east. Seven-day tracker shows some cooler temperature coming our way in the 50s all day to tomorrow. Spot shower is also possible. The sun does break out on Tuesday. Cooler weather through the middle of the week as well. For, every, for everyone who's been asking for it, here it is. <laughs> well, that's News Channel 12 at 10. Thanks for watching, and have a good night.